Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Fire on 4, Kai's Rick and South Africa. Let us continue on from where we last left off. So we are now become South African People's Union. So what are we going to do first? Well, we can either do the Great Purge, which gives us some stability, which we actually have over 14%. Racist reform repealed. People become less, don't become generals anymore. Political power, research people's 5%. Or we want to do the Johannesburg Convention. Probably want to get this one done first because it's kind of like the uh, the, the story-based uh, focus. The opening of the Johannesburg Convention. The Johannesburg Convention has opened. South Africa's old government is no more. And delegates from a constant country of all ethnicities have gathered in Johannesburg to establish the constitution to base its newly crafted government on. Drafts are based on the systems of government of British and France. But it seems clear that there is, will be factionalism. One of the... On the one hand, there is David Ivan Jones and his ISL, who, while openly calling for eventual power-sharing agree uh, agreement, argue that whites will first need to guide the social state until the popular majority is sufficiently educated and politically aware to be able to properly participate in communal politics. On the other hand, are the ICU who have been elected by, uh, to be led by the newly arrived Clement Aiden, who wants to immediately implement a system of ethnic feder uh, federalism given a degree of autonomy to each ethnic group under the united multiracial state. As the compromise between the whites who fear swamping by the larger amount of narratives and the decisions uh, will be made by the half and half split group with the representatives of both organizations. Let the debates begin! Get a 10% stability boost as well. So Canada should be declaring war on us soon. It's just, you know, mere moments. The Rand Rebellion has succeeded. So what are you going to do? Clements Kede has returned from exile. Originally from Nazi land, Clements Kede uh, was South Africa's first black national trade union organizer and foundation of the Industrial Commercial Union of 1919, which has grown to be the largest native rights organization with active as far north as Zambia. With its influence, the union has played a crucial role in the success of the South African Revolution. In 1924, the South African government had deported Kede, who left for London just in time to play a role in the revolution there ever since. Kelly has acted as a representative of South African Syndicalist Movement in London and Paris. Now that the bourgeois government of South Africa has been torn down, the influential politician has returned to South Africa to mark his presence in the post-revolutionary politics. When the ship arrived in Cape Town, he received a hero's welcome by the crowds waving for him. I get a little bit of political power as well. I'm assuming Canada always declares war on you. But they might not. Maybe they actually aren't going to declare war. The Legislative Branch. The first clash between the ISL and the ICU materializes on the topic of the Legislative Branch. Well, both sides agree that the new legislative uh, institution should be by, by rate, probably by Basel, and the lower house should be a confederation of trade unions. They all agree. They all have to agree that the name of the South African Confederation of Trade Unions, SACTU, is the upper house that is the cause for cons conservation. The ISL seeks to establish a so-called advisory commission, an organ elected by white South Africans, which should serve as a check in the legislative approved by the SACTU, which can block legislation or amend it with the approval of the government. The ICU, on the other hand, wants the upper house to be ethnic representative council, with each ethnicity receiving two delegates who can, with a majority, send the legislation back to the SACTU, who would then be obligated to amend or repeal it before sending it back to the ERC. So you are 10% stability. New division organization, I think just the ability is going to be better for us, as well as the recruitable population is also uh, quite, quite nice. And we can actually change stuff here now. With 190 political power, we want to go straight to early mobilization. And once we hit back in like nine days, we probably want to... Can we go up to partial mobilization? No, because we don't have enough war support. We're actually 1% short of that, unfortunately. So I, I think the Canadians actually are just not going to intervene in our affairs. Uh, last time, when I was doing my, like, test run of the South African campaign, uh, the Canadians did just declare war on us. So I guess we're fine then. I guess. Well, if that's the case, we don't need these guys then. I'm going to leave you on the ports just in case. Oh, Canada, I am glad. I'm guessing you don't like me very much. Uh, different ideology. Apparently, I'm plus 20 with you. Pride in the Empire. I don't know if that necessarily is true anymore, but okay. The Judicial Brands. Another clash has uh, started over the Judicial Brands. The ISL wants a single and colorblind ju uh, judicial system for all South Africans, regardless of the circumstances of the crime, but no rights object to who judges you based on the color of their skin. 
In effect, because almost exclusively whites have been educated in the law, which means the old judicial system will likely be the most uh, preserved. And as the justice system creates no pressure to educate new non-white lawyers, justice will be carried out by an exclusively by whites for the foreseeable future. This reality has been noticed by the ICU, who has instead wants to it constitutionally, constitutionally entrenched that each group of the Federation will have the right to be judged by their own ethnicity if they so desire in the case against the government, and a judge not held to the ethnicity of either side in a civil case. We get more cynicism or more stability. Modifies, okay, so super good factor. But probably let's go for the 10% stability boost. Get all that stability going. Because we're at 44%, which I think is pretty good for us. Right now we have low participation. While New South Africa is inclusive towards all and values the input of every worker, regardless of ethnicity, participation is low. Many South Africans want to live their lives and have a little affiliation with politics, of which they've been excluded before regardless. As a result, the proletarian electorate is mostly made up of white workers and non-white intellectuals and activists, while most of the black labor force does not participate despite being allowed to. White flight. Much of South Africa's bourgeoisie do not take kindly to the new socialist government. These communities are now gripped with fear of being swamped both by other racial groups and are leaving South Africa in large numbers to countries they consider to be more friendly to their kind, such as elsewhere in the British Empire or in Europe. Well, fortunately, many others have chosen to stay here. The unfortunate truth is that these immigrants take with them the most valuable knowledge and expertise to thank to discriminatory segregationist education system is not beholden to the wider population. It is believed that we will need to recover from this setback. Because we're going to lose one factory. No, we're going to lose two factories. And we're going to lose 106% population for a few months, as well as some stability lost, which is not great for us, of course. The executive branch. The final conflict is with regards to the executive branch. The ISL wants the government to derive its legitimacy from the upper house and to atypically make it possible for that house to recall government officials only. Under this plan, the SACTU will only have the ability to control the government through the failing of it to approve its legislation. Of course, the ICU disagrees and wants the point of gravity to be with the SACTU, lower house, which is more properly represents the will of people according to them as it is elected indirectly, but equality for every worker in our, uh, in our nation. So your political power gain plus point of five and p command power gain. Definitely, I think this wants this war sports ability because that will allow me to immediately go straight up to partial mobilization, uh, which is pretty good for us. Now we're going to get more factories. Uh, the factories that we are building already are going to be cheaper to build. Um, which should improve our situation, because you're going to be done now in September instead of December. That's like a 3-4 like month improvement. So I will take that. We definitely don't want this template anymore because it's garbage. How many of you? So we have three of you, one of you, and one of you. But we don't want any more of the command garrisons. The command garrisons are basically garbage. We want to, if anything, train up maybe like two of you. The problem, of course, is that we just don't have guns. Like, even, like, any amount of rifles, we just do not have. So maybe we want to try to get some points here. British arms, cheaper weapons, more defense, land doctrine, a cruiser effort. Your organization attack. And what are your one military factory, division speed, land doctrine, your research is for tanks. So I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking we probably are going to want to go for the British when we do the international advisors. So what else do you do? You give us mobilization speed, group population stability goes up a little bit. You are political power and stability and you are organization Factory fish the cap going up a little bit. Recruit population up by 20% is also not bad. So all of these, I mean, everything seems like it will be pretty useful for us. We cannot do this until I'm assuming we join the International. Like, okay, the French actually have to found the International faction, which makes actually a lot of sense. So the ICU government is inaugurated. The Johannesburg Convention has closed and the Constitution is, has been approved. Elections have been held on the grounds of the decisions made and it was clear that the ICU managed to break the power monopoly of the ISL uh, was intent on designing for themselves. As such, after years of exile in Britain, the Clement, uh, Clements Kedley 
has been elected as the first non provisional chairman of the new South Africa and the first non white head of state of the nation. Seeking to prevent racial struggles from embracing fr the country, he has recommended a cabinet of members of each South African ethnicities, headed by the Secretary of the Executive, Solomon Sachs, a white South African, and Fred Zakudli. Despite this, the, the new mostly non white government takes some adjusting for the white population of South Africa and unrest in areas where they for majority is on the rise. Okay. Seems fine for us. A new South Africa rises. And I think at this point... Because we, we want to be improving our... Let me just actually look. Factories. All... Like, there's a lot of industrial stuff here. But there's a lot of stuff here. We can't do that, of course, until France actually does it first. Your military factory. Your naval dockyards... I guess, you know, let's do the Great Purge first. So you are now in control of the country. Which seems okay for us. We also have some research slots available. Um, let's go... It's 1936 still. Is there anything here that I want to research first? You'd be okay. I think we're going to go for construction too. Seems like a good place for us to start here. And what do you want? You are... Do we still actually have the effects of Black Monday? We do. And I'm not too sure how we can fight it. Implement tariffs. Maybe you will just automatically get rid of it. I'm not too, too sure, honestly. Unemployment apparently is still 26%, which seems pretty bad. We can join the International after January, because we're not actually at war with the Canadians, which is good for us, for sure. But the question is, does that make any sense for us? Because South, like, Middle Africa has 8 to 21 divisions. We don't want to join the International if it's going to lead to us getting completely steamrolled. Because Portugal's probably also going to join the Entente, which is a little bit worrying, for sure. Poland has elected a new king. So they are they which faction are you going with, Poland? You're going with a Saxon king, which I believe is Yeah, for Germany. So you're gonna be joining the uh, the Reichs Pact. Pretty sure that's what you guys are gonna be doing. You're gonna prove more conditions, more stability. But I right now I don't wanna be losing any factory output. Because we need those guns ASAP. Like, it's very, very important for us to do that. So we got the Russian Republic up towards the north. Are you guys doing anything? Dissolve the Rada. Which is... I think you're just a normal, um... Reichspact. So nothing too crazy there. Finland has gone, um... National populist. I don't know if Norway has is going to go syndicalist or not quite yet. But we we shall see. I don't really think anybody right now is really going syndicalist at the moment, which could maybe spell disaster for us. We'll kind of have to wait, though. Wait and see what happens. We're going to do limit conscription, because limit conscription has absolutely no downsides. And will only allow us to train up more units, which is nice for us. So you'll be finished in a moment. After that, let's go with... Because we, we want to be getting our way down here. Like, the military factory is nice. Construction people is 25%. It's also really good. As well as we can get that production at cost minus 10% would also be very useful for us. But on the other hand, getting all of this stuff could be really nice as well. So, you know what? Let's do a revolution in peace. It's going to give us some political power as well. Be done in 56 days. We're missing steel, but again, is that just for the convoys? If it's just for the convoys, it's also affecting the artillery, but artillery we actually do have a small, small surplus. So I'm a little bit less concerned about that at the moment. In fact, we still only have two military factories, but we're about to have a third, uh, which is good. Put one more down uh, in Western Cape. Yeah, Poland's doing the right expect. Not a major surprise there. I think we all kind of saw that one coming. What we got? Uh, South African Broadcast Corporation. Apparently that still exists, even though, um... 
We did do that under the old government. Okay, the Indo-Chinese Union has risen up. We could send the volunteers. And put them over into Saigon. Like, we, like we've done a lot, a lot of times. And you know what? I think I am going to do that, to be completely honest with you. We're going to go for the guy with the highest defense value, which I think is just you. So we'll put you in charge. I'm going to send you to Indochina. And you're just going to hold Saigon. That's really going to be your only job. Of course, this weakens Germany, which helps us out. How long? When will you be there? You'll be there in... October 1st. So you still got a few days left. Which is okay. Basically, we just have to wait long enough for the offensive to actually fire in the north. Which usually allows these guys to win pretty easily. So now that you are here, just defend this province. That's really all you have to do. I don't know why you guys are on the border, though, with uh, Siam, because I don't think they can intervene in this war at all. So I would recommend not worrying about them at all. We'll just keep our one unit there, and hopefully he'll be okay and not be murdered. You know, if everything goes according to plan. We are missing more steel. But I still think that's kind of okay. Our productive efficiency cap is horrible. The cap is 28%. The base cap is 50 because of race segregation effects of Black Monday. That's really just only harming us, which is really bad. Unofficial racial segregation. We probably want to be making that a little bit better as well. Does you are mobilization speed. Surrender limit goes up. Weezer speed goes up a little bit as well. Remove that speed. Reactionary non-cooperation. Which is... Mobilization speed, organization, surrender limit, research speed. Pretty bad, all things considered. After that... Replace the effects of Black Monday with conversion to a syndical economy. I mean, that seems pretty good. Enables access to the economic tree. That also seems like it could be useful for us. So, you know what? We need to do... We need to make our industry as good as we possibly can, as fast as possible. You're a little bit too expensive, so let's go for the uh, cap upgrade here. You guys are going to go for the concentrated industry too. Just industry, industry, industry until we have enough rifles, until we have enough men. To actually... Because we're going to probably have to fight the Portuguese and fight South Africa, or Middle Africa, I should say. Which is going to take a lot of troops. Like, just a lot of men. As you can see, my guy's already done his job in Saigon. How many shoots does um, East Asia have? 6 to 30. We, we don't want to be attacking ourselves, of course. Uh, we want reinforcement, of course, on top priority. These guys have no idea what the hell they're trying to do. If Floyd B. Olson's been elected president of the United States, that is completely okay. Because these guys are eventually just going to be killed no matter what. Like, their organization is going to just go down and down and down. And it shouldn't improve at all. If you're 28% attrition, it's pretty bad for you. The a and I have won the Italian elections. You are going to be absolutely murdered. But hopefully the AI doesn't bring too many troops down south. We're no longer the effects of white flight, so that's going to at least make our population a little bit more stable. The racial segregation, though, is still really, really, really hurting us. And there's still there's slavery in the high commissioner's territories? That seems pretty bad. But Norway's joining the international now, so I guess that's something. What it does mean is that they're going to get absolutely destroyed by the, the Swedish when, this, when the Second Field Creek actually starts. I mean, you, you are actually social democratic. But the SAP SCV coalition did not rise to power, so unfortunately, they will not be going for the international. Yeah, see, Germany does the same thing again. They just did another naval invasion. This one, of course, is not going to work out either. These guys are trapped, though. 
they, they could easily get surrounded and killed. Which would be pretty bad for us. Uh, so, you know, China, you need to take one unit there so that you get the encirclement penalty. Don't go here. Why would you go here? It's a very weird choice for you. We have 265 political power. Um, can industry concerns. Civilian factory. We want military factory inc speed increasing. Your resource gain efficiency. But yeah, I think we just want the South African Iron and Steel Industrial Corporation. Get those guys in charge. Now you're encircled, which is good for us. And are you also in multiple combats? You're not, but it's not that big of a deal. Because eventually Germany's East Asia is going to send all their troops attacking Saigon over and over and over again. Which is going to be bad for them. So let's see. Reactionary. Converted to a centerless economy. Tolerate small farming enterprises. The conversion of social economy will not grow... Uh, in intensity, but com com completing the conversion will have less benefits. Well, let's nationalize the agrarian potential. 36 days. It's not too, too bad. But please do not let yourself get encircled. That is very important. But I do think that at least for right now, it's going to be a good time for us to end this episode. So thanks everybody for watching. My name is Anthem. If you enjoyed, put a thumbs up. And now do we close something down. You want to see me subscribe? And goodbye.